Oh, I see we've got a, a great comment in the chat. Um, how did you get started learning Rust? What was it about Rust that appealed to you in the first place? Well, how did I get started? I think I think probably the the main way people get started is just the Rust book. So this I think um, is pretty good, especially the first part. So I definitely read Getting Started. I programmed a guessing game. I started reading some of the concepts, um, understanding ownership. I think probably through the first six chapters is a really good thing to read just to get started. Although I came to Rust with a lot of experience programming in Go. Um, so that kind of gets into the second question. What was it that appealed to me in the first place about Rust specifically was basically that it was like Go, but it had more tools for abstraction. So a good example of that is actually where I am in the book right now, enums and pattern matching. So in Go, at least as far as I know, um, the best you can do for an enum, so let's say, what's the example here? Um, let's see, shapes, you have rectangle, circle, triangle. So in Rust, you can write that like this. Enum shape can either be a rectangle or it can be a circle or a triangle. Now, you can do something similar in Go with this basic idea. In Go, you would do, I think, const. Uh, the Rust thing is not going to like this. You do const, um, let's say, I think you, some, it's something like this at least. Rectangle equals iota. Circle. Triangle. Something like this. I, this is not exactly right. There, it's missing something here. But it's something like this. So in Go, you can define a kind of enum like this where each one just gets assigned an integer. So this will be 0, 1, and 2. And then I think in Go, you usually define like a type alias and stuff like that. But what that really is, at least, so I haven't ever used these in C, but this is basically a tagged union. So um, that means you'll have some struct. This isn't exactly right again because it is a union, but you'll have some struct and it has fields and one of them is going to be like the type, which will be, I don't know, will be type shape. And then you'll have like radius, let's just use integers for now, radius, uh, whatever, radius, uh, length, width, whatever. And when you operate on this struct, this type of shape, you have to look at the type and then know which ones of these fields to use based on this type. So that's the best you can do in Go, basically. Or C, or maybe even C++, I'm not sure. In contrast, um, with Rust enums, you're able to define fields on the different variants of the enum. So if I have a rectangle, I can say length is a U size and width is a U size, like that. And with circle, I can just have radius. Triangle, I can have um, length, or uh, let's say base and height. So I'm able to define these different structs directly in the shape enum. So that's really, really nice for modeling things in a way that, that this is not. The other nice thing about this is if I do impulse shape, what? and I want to write some function like area that takes a self and returns a, it's gonna to have to be an F64. Then all I have to do is match self and fill these match arms. And I'm forced by this match to handle all of the cases. Again, Go has something somewhat similar with its case thing, but the compiler doesn't force you to handle everything. So that's one of the things that really drew me to Rust. The other thing uh, is generics. Now, I know Go has generics now, but what Go still doesn't have is the, the trait system that Rust has. 
So the two really big things for me with Rust are traits and enums. This kind of enum. So those two things together are really, really cool. And the other nice thing is actually the memory model. So with the, with the ownership and the borrowing stuff, it does protect you from bugs that you can actually introduce in Go. For example, I, I had some kind of looping, modifying thing in Go where I was, I was trying to like iteratively modify the same array and one part of the code was like holding a reference to the array or the slice, whatever, that I was trying to modify. And then I would go through the loop, try to modify it. And when it reached a certain size, it would reallocate the underlying array. So my reference would no longer be valid. And it was the craziest bug I think I had ever encountered basically. Well, besides some concurrency, concurrency bugs. And <laughs> so uh, I tried writing the same thing in Rust and it told me, well, you can't mutate this because something else has a reference to it. So this kind of memory safety is really nice. And it gets back to the other kind of confusing bug I talked about, which is concurrency bugs. So in Go, I mean, it has really nice support for um, channels and stuff like that. But the, the garbage collector doesn't do the same thing as the borrow checker. It doesn't enforce through the type system that you're using things correctly. So it's a lot easier to write concurrent code in Rust as well. So, okay, that's basically all the stuff about Rust and why I like it so much. But getting back to learning about it, I think this book is a really good place to start. Um, I actually like, what's it called? Programming Rust by O'Reilly. Now, <clears throat> I've read some reviews online that say this is kind of an intermediate book. If you're learning programming for the first time, this is probably not the best book to go with. I think the Rust book maybe is more approachable. I mean, let's, let's see, who, who do they say this is for? Who this book is for? This book assumes you've written code in another language. Oh, goodness. Uh, okay, maybe not. But I, I have seen this listed as like an intermediate book. So probably don't go for that as your first book. Um, apparently, maybe you're not supposed to go for this as your first book. And uh, so what should you do? I guess really the best advice is still to dive into this book. You're not going to understand everything, and I think that's expected. So don't feel like you have to ex understand everything to go through it. Just go through, extract what you can, and as soon as you have a little bit of knowledge, I would recommend either doing, um, you know, you can do Advent of Code, you can do Project Euler, however you say it. Um, basically, you just need some kind of set of problems to work on just to practice using the language and anything you don't understand or you can't figure out I recommend going to the documentation and and searching for stuff try doing puzzles like this puzzles like this or working on your own project that if you already have one if you don't these projects just give you something um, kind of small self-contained usually with good instructions to get you started and when you hit something you don't understand either Go back to the book, try to find something that sounds applicable, or start searching around in the documentation.